been very much looking forward to this show because it's a different show for me. I've been curious about how best to challenge or to inspire the awareness of the perception that the visitors has themselves. The how do we see? How do we experience? What's the, what's the limits of my own seeing? If it's a very hospitable situation, right? it's like a great dinner or something, then you, then you dare to open up. So this is a place where I can relax my defensiveness. So the title of the show is Open. A cultural institution like LMOCA in particular has in itself the ability to say we are open and we are also open to you. But there's also the question of, you know, do we, the visitors, have the courage to be open also? Am I open to reconsiderations? Am I open to kind of like maybe even to relax my avoidance of pain? The pain are really things that are inconvenient to talk about. If you are less defensive, you also become more vulnerable. And in a situation with a work of art, I recognize myself maybe in it, I feel seen. I might leave the museum saying, I didn't go to see art. It was as if the art saw me. The museum is there for me. I'm important enough for this museum to have a show for me. If it's the experience, which is the artwork, then it requires me to be there. If I go out, then there's no artwork. So it's the relationship between me and the artwork and, and nature in that sense. Here in particular in the West Coast, there was the ephemeral conditioning of humans. It was about the interaction between people and in this case, the light in the, here in LA. And that was very interesting for me because it opened up these questions of perception about psychology and, and you know, what's the consequences of feeling dematerialized. I then came in and I said, okay, I love the light. I'm gonna punch a few holes in the roof. And, and I took the daylight in. And you know, in that way, I tried to use the building. I very much wanted also to, to, to utilitarize the space in this open way. You come in and you look out again. As I see, you don't step into the museum to get away from the outside or from the reality. You step into the museum to see reality in a higher definition. It's like a microscope or binocular. Learning from the great Californian light and space artist to some extent, I lean into the history here. I use the ephemera, the light and the sort of imaginary space. And then I actually doesn't do much other than letting the outside come in. And it's quite spectacular as it is already. This particular quality of light for me always had something to do with things get soft. It hosts a certain sort of ambivalent space. What am I looking at? Is it moldable? Does it change if I change? And suddenly space seems relative to your en engagement. I can sort of like it with a clay, I can sort of ch change the space. And that's a very interesting idea because if reality is relative, I am important. But we should be careful to not credit science for reality. It's not. Science is a take on reality. What can science then learn from art? But what does it mean to be a person today? What does it mean to have no relationship with things that are abstract? Because we never learn to relate to what the philosopher Timothy Morrison calls hyper objects, like our atmosphere, like the climate crisis. It's so difficult to understand. And this is where culture can come in and make things that are very, very abstract palpable. And this is really important, I think. Mm -hmm.